Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Unmanned combat aerial vehicles, or combat drones, are used to conduct drone strikes and battlefield intelligence. Aircraft of this type have no onboard human pilot, resulting in a lower weight and smaller size as compared to a manned aircraft. The UCAVs have developed significantly over the years. However, the true potential of these remote piloted aircraft is yet to be determined. The development of the modern-day UCAV dates back to the 1930s, when drones and guided missiles were considered the same. During World War II, the U.S. Air Force tried to convert war-weary bombers into aerial weapons that could obliterate both sea and land-based targets. They put radio-controlled equipment and explosives on the bombers and flew them into hardened targets. This approach led to the development of powerful target drones with advanced technology, larger wings, and autonomous capabilities. Fast forward to the 1990s, the USAF discovered the MQ-1 Predator, the first drone that could carry missiles, such as an AGM-114 Hellfire. The Predator provided the USAF with the capability to conduct drone attacks for almost three decades. The General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper is a large, heavier, and more capable aircraft than the MQ-1 Predator. It's used by the U.S. Air Force for various military and surveillance operations beyond national boundaries. One could wonder, is it safe to deploy a drone worth millions of dollars to unknown territories? Well, patrolling a drone in international airspace always involves a risk of interception by other aircraft. On March 13, 2023, two Russian Su-27 aircraft conducted an unsafe and unprofessional intercept with a U.S. Air Force unmanned MQ-9 aircraft operating within international airspace over the Black Sea. Russian Su-27s dumped fuel on the MQ-9 and struck its propeller, thereby causing the drone to crash into the Black Sea. Like any other complex aircraft, assembling an MQ-9 Reaper requires skilled technicians and attention to detail. The MQ-9 fuselage serves as the main structure of the drone which is set up inside the hangar before initiating the assembly process. After everything is set up, the crew assembles the wing and tail section separately. Wing assembly involves attaching the main wing structure, ailerons and flaps on each side of the fuselage. In contrast, the tail assembly involves joining two stabilizers, a propeller and a rudder below the tail section. When assembled, the drone can be loaded with weaponry to conduct missions. The 
The MQ-9's typical armament consists of four AGM-114 Hellfire laser-guided air-to-ground missiles, along with two GBU-12 Paveway-2 laser-guided bombs. It can also be equipped with other weapon systems, such as the AGM-176 Griffin and the GBU-38JDAM. Moreover, the USAF also plans to load it with the GBU-39SDB in the future, which will increase the payload capacity of the MQ-9, allowing it to destroy more targets on the battlefield. After assembling and loading weaponry on it, the MQ-9 is towed to the runway by a modified tow truck. The maintenance crew prepares the aircraft and ensures it's ready to fly for up to 27 hours. The wheel chocks are removed. And the pilot at the ground control station is signaled for takeoff. The MQ-9 is controlled remotely from a mobile ground control station, which can be set up anywhere in the world. The MQ-9 Reaper is typically used to conduct attack missions globally. To successfully launch a missile attack, the Reaper must be pointed toward its target to create the perfect firing angle. Once the target is identified, the operator launches the attack from the ground control station. The missiles take around 30 seconds to hit the target, depending on the launch height and distance of the Reaper from the target at the time of the launch. The MQ-9 was the first large-scale drone ever built with both attack and defense capabilities. The 36-foot-long aircraft has a 65-foot wingspan standing just over 12 feet high. This flat profile gives the Reaper a reduced radar signature, which helps it stay undetected during missions. All thanks to its Honeywell TPE-331 turboprop engine, which is far more powerful than those installed in its predecessors, the MQ-9 is capable of carrying 3,800 pounds of ordnance across a range of more than 1,200 miles. On top of that, the MQ-9 is equipped with a multi-spectral targeting system, which incorporates an infrared sensor, a color and monochrome daylight TV camera, a shortwave infrared camera, a laser distance indicator, a laser target illumination system, and, of course, a radar. The images from each sensor can be presented separately, as well as in combined form, allowing the drone to see ground targets both day and night. The MQ-9 Reaper requires maintenance after every mission. Once the aircraft lands, the aircrew taxi it off the runway and into a hangar to perform a post-flight inspection.
The maintenance team checks for any structural flaw caused by wear and tear and repairs it immediately. Their objective is to make sure that every component of the Reaper is operational and is prepared for the next airborne mission. Challenges to the job, I would say, are the how new these aircraft are. These, they uh, came out into the field very quickly, so we still have a few uh, things to work out, but we're, we're breaking new ground every single day. Every, every single day, we're coming up with new and exciting ideas to get the mission done. The MQ-9 is piloted by two operators sitting next to each other in a cockpit at the ground control station. One of them is the pilot, who maneuvers the aircraft during the mission, while the other is the sensor operator, who manages the MTS system. The sole purpose of the pilot is to monitor the airspace and use control sticks to maneuver the drone in the right direction. On the contrary, the sensor operator manipulates the camera, lasers, and other systems to identify targets. Um, they're all set for instantaneous right now, just so you know. Another notable fact is that the operators cannot launch an MQ-9 from thousands of miles away. It takes up to two seconds for a satellite control signal to reach a Reaper in another continent. And such a delay would cause crashes during takeoff and landing. To overcome this problem, the Reaper must be kept in close proximity to the ground control station while taking off. However, the control can later be transferred to the crew stationed thousands of miles away near the target location using satellite links. General Atomics has recently unveiled its all-new MQ-9B Sky Guardian. This next-generation combat drone is equipped with a high-resolution, electro-optical and infrared nose-mounted MTSB sensor, capable of indicating moving targets. Not only that, the MQ-9B also has short takeoff and landing capability which will allow it to take off from the deck of an aircraft carrier. General Atomics believes that the U.S. Navy and the Marine Corps will specifically be interested in the STOL Reaper because of its ability to provide ISR capabilities for up to 40 hours. Moreover, the MQ-9B can endure the weather in cold regions like Antarctica, Before the development of the MQ-1 Predator, the Air Forces around the world were not ready to accept the fact that a drone could be far more efficient than the eyes of a pilot in a manned aircraft. Today, drones like the MQ-9 Reaper exhibit advanced capabilities and render air support to manned aircraft on various battlefields. So it's safe to say that the UCAVs are bound to change the course of military operations. However, it is not yet evident to claim that these unmanned aircraft will replace the likes of F-16s or F-35s in the future. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.